Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is probably sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see the founder at least twice a day. I see he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, try and get to 4,000 subscribers at the end of the month. So if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have a New York Gotham-based restaurant. Well, they are shut down after a Saturday program. And granted, I'm not sure if the restaurant was truly based. They are just actually headquartered and based in New York. But nevertheless, going to the actual article, this is coming to us thanks to David Proper at the New York Post. And they say that, quote, New York City's ritzy Gotham restaurant was forced to close after falling to a victim to a $45,000 cybercrime, which is quite heartbreaking to say the least. They say that the restaurant is forced to shut down after the cybercrime, and now its co-owner is warning other businesses it should look out. And, of course, there's the cliche payroll attack, which is one of the most common ways to go after you. The owner, or co-owner, rather, Brett Sinisky, says, quote, We just couldn't keep our payroll going. We don't have enough money, so we're pausing in a recent interview. Which, here's how, as youth might say, it went down. The saga started for the upscale eatery on May 10th, a Friday, when a thief pretending to work for a company Gotham uses to administer payroll emailed the owner and his HR staffer to tell them the firm was changing their banking information because of internal issues. Which, the red flag number one, they're doing stuff on a Friday, which most people, I would say a lot of people, their guards are down because, again, they just want to get home. Their brain is already on the weekend. Now, they... Got another big red flag has to do with payroll. Now, they charged staffer contacted the owner to take a look at the request. He could he go through past emails and appeared to be an employee that they typically talk to from the payroll company. So this is a pretty advanced impersonation attempt or attack. This malicious actor knew exactly who this person was working for, which if you break into someone's email, rudimentary speaking, you know, hack into their email, look at all the other things that they've gone through, you know, the contacts. Now he said, quote, and then, I, oh, this is heartbreaking. So they got this email saying, hey, yeah, we have new payroll. We have new, we have new banking, you know, so you need to send us the money to this new address. So the owner says, quote, and then I wired the money to the new account with the company name and their address. It's not until several hours later we realized that something seems a little weird, unquote. Which, again, never, ever, ever do this. And it's heartbreaking because, again, it's, they're literally going out of business because of this cybercrime. And... Granted, I care a little bit more than the average person, probably because I'm biased. I do this for a living as well. But the number one advice I can tell people is, and it's, again, there's no such thing as a perfect defense from cyber attacks or cyber criminals. It's the ultimate cat and mouse game, which is partially why I find it so fascinating. But anytime money is involved, especially when you have two things. So you have one, they're changing the banking information. That's a big red flag. And then this is right at, right before they have to send them a bunch of money as well. Just pick up the phone and call them. It takes, on average, less than 60 seconds, but it could save your company. And granted, even that's not perfect. Maybe they put a fake note, a fake new phone number in their signature. But yeah, anytime money's involved, give that person a call. I mean, ideally, if you have uh, an alternative way to you know communicate with them, I mean, ideally you're friends with them, maybe on social media or maybe a professional website like LinkedIn. Maybe send them a message. Or you know, Microsoft Teams chat, which again, even those can be suspicious as well if it's um, out of the normal. But again, this is oh, this has so many red flags, and yeah, it literally could just take in you know pick up pick up phone and call the original company. And say, hey, are you really changing your bank for information? We've been doing this for years. Why are you doing this? Is this because Silicon Valley Bank Web you know belly up? So that makes sense. Maybe you're going somewhere else, or has someone maybe hacked your system and you didn't even know it? I mean, we don't even know yet, and dep granted, given the small fiscal amount relative to the total FBI's you know current workload, this I doubt this gets a a big full report. They they say that they fil filed this with the FBI, but again, they're de they're also dealing with malicious attacks that are in the hundreds of millions, even even greater. And he said, "quote This is again from the owner. When you look at it, no one would notice it normally, but eventually we're going to dig into why it's happening, what we found the difference." He contacted the bank, but so far the financial institution institution has not recovered the money. Be surprised, banks do more safeguard. Yeah, they don't do more. Well, that is why there's also a big warning label. And again, I, I'm um, overly bombastic, and again, there's many reasons why this part of the show today is you know more. I'm more involved or connected with it than usual because again, I do it for a living, and I know people have lost their livelihoods because of cyber crimes, cyber attacks like this. 
And again, the banks really don't care. That's why there's a big warning label that says if you're about to wire someone's money, hey, this is your money. The risk is all on you. Once this money goes, it's gone. Again, one of the reasons why a lot some of my clients, again, I won't say their names, but there is an upside of using a gold old fashioned check. Some, might, some people might think it's rudimentary or outdated, but you know what? Depending on the situation, and granted, it's not as convenient. I absolutely agree with that. But sometimes it makes sense just to drive to your customer or have them, you know, again, mailing it to you. That's also a threat vector, maybe they intercept the mail. But again, I know a lot of companies that still use checks because they perceive it as being a safer option and less risky. Now, of course, check fraud is a huge thing. There's a whole movie made out of it called Catch Me If You Can, which is another time for another time, for another time perhaps. Now, in terms of many people may ask, well, why don't they have cyber insurance? That's a very common business practice these days. I mean, a lot of companies have a lot of people, a lot of companies actually will not do business with, uh, business to business if you actually do not have a specific policy for that. And a lot of companies will even get general. There's a lot of reasons why this, you know, is a whole industry in and of itself. Now, the last quote he got, again, Gotham got a quote for cyber insurance policy. It will cost $5,000 a year, which again, being a restaurant that is, I'm guessing, prohibitively expensive. Since many restaurants, it's a very small margin. Um, but the back grant we did apples to oranges or perhaps filet mignon to rudimentary hamburger, McDonald's to this place. I mean, both McDonald's is all volume business, make a little bit and it goes up, you know, over time. But in this case, depending on how much you're paying for the ingredients, because then it's a higher end restaurant, you're also paying more for all the ingredients, the materials, the talent, the people, the atmosphere. I can't imagine what the rent is just for this place in New York. Because again, that's one of the most expensive places to live. And then of course you have to go, you know, they have to burn some taxes, you have the payroll taxes, and unfortunately, one of the first things companies cut or they just don't entertain is sometimes cybersecurity insurance. And, you know, they say, you know, they say, you know, really heartbreaking. He says, quote, please know this was a difficult decision. It was not made lightly. Business levels and recent cyber deception incident resulted in a large loss, made it necessary for us to pause operations and consider options. Please know I'm deeply appreciative of every employee and I'm sorry for any distress this may cause. I do hope all will consider rejoining Gotham in the summer. So, Again, hope it's been in business for 40 years. They closed for two years during the pandemic. You know, they, they plan to reopen, but yeah, I, I just, unfortunately, I don't know, I guess, I guess, unless they get a big lifeline and again, who knows, maybe they get really lucky and one of the top patrons is very philanthropic and they can throw some money at, at this because I mean, again, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a, a whole year's payroll. I'm not sure what that dollar amount is relative to the business operational cost. But again, if you, especially if you work in accounting or if you work in payroll, if you're sending, if you have anything to do, anything to do with sending and receiving money, especially in a business perspective, I mean, always look out for these big giant red flags and always, and, and again, a lot, I mean, a lot of people don't even make phone calls these days. It's, a lot of people think it's a rudimentary technology. Just take the 60 seconds to pick up the phone. I cannot tell you how many stories I've heard of companies saving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars throughout the years, just by calling a person and saying, hey, just want to make sure, is this you, Bobby, or is this you, Sean? And it is, I mean, they've told me, it's like having a bucket of water, ice water thrown on your heart when they say, oh no, it's not me. And then they know they've had a security breach and you know, then they have to go in the, well, not simple sales block, sales block talking technologies, reach out to companies like mine, they can do redeme remediation, analysis, then secure the environment. So definitely make sure you look out for those. Ideally, take some cybersecurity awareness training. But yeah, always be vigilant. And I mean, hopefully, I don't know if they'll actually make a comeback if there's a restaurant. But as always, vigilance is key. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.